In the same way that people are like proactive and they go to the gym because they don't want to be heavy or they want to have good heart health. Mm -hmm. In the same way that people are proactive because they eat healthy foods, we should be proactive um, in thinking about the things that we bring into our home that contribute to what's known as like an overall body burden, right. which is the amount of chemicals that your body has in it. But all of those chemicals, or a lot of them, can also um, undermine your natural detoxification systems. So your liver function, your kidney function, um, your bowel function, all of those things are part of the detoxification process. Yes. Yes. So This is very true. Your blood even. Yeah, all of these things, um, you know, you've got these um, organs of detoxification, these systems that will help usher out right. the toxins that are in the body. But if you're also putting them in at the same time, it's sort of like trying to bail out a, a boat that's got a hole in it. Right. It's just constantly filling up and you're constantly bailing it out, but you never actually make any progress. Right. So that's what I think we'll start doing today is trying to plug up those holes right. and stop the t uh, additional toxins as much as we can or give you a foundation of where you can start. So there's ones that like are obvious, like that are ones that are in food, like the additives and the artificial colors. And those actually are designed by food chemists to mess with your brain chemistry so that you crave them more. They spend millions of dollars of research to do this every year, which still blows my mind. Um, Definitely. But then there's the ones that you are uh, encountering that actually have no reaction, you have no reaction to, um, and their um, impact is sort of, it's latent. So you may not rec realize that uh, a damage has been done until decades later. Um, it's all happening very silently under the surface. Um, these are chemicals that are uh, synthetic estrogens. So anything that is gonna be responsive to estrogen um, or any t any type of uh, hormonal imbalance, BPA. BPA, phthalates, but then there's you know some of the heavy metals interfere with this way, the flame retardants that are found in sofas, and these are some of the things that we can't really do too much about as individuals. I don't want my clothes to be organic. Kitchen. Just want to get from your perspective, like what do you see in here that you would trigger you as thinking like, oh, that might be toxic or that might be a point of exposure? I don't like this glass. Right, okay. Or this one. Okay. I mean this, yeah. This type plastic, of plastics. plastics, yep, okay. And then. Oh, they stink, they have a funny smell and they make everything taste like it. Right, well these are actually two totally different types of plastic. Right. Um, and right. the one that has BPA in it, or likely has BPA in it, is gonna be this one, not this one. Really, and this is the one that stinks. Well, this is, <laughs> there, there's very likely other chemicals yeah, of course. that are gonna be found in there. Oh, um, potentially phthalates. Phthalates are a type of um, plasticizer, as is BPA. Okay. Phthalates are responsible for making plastic soft and squishy. So your shower curtain has phthalates, yeah. right? Your, not, and not always, but the, the formulations of, that companies use to make their plastics uh, products are proprietary, meaning they don't have, it's, it's a trade secret. They don't have to tell us what's actually in them. So a lot of times we're just guessing. And those little recycle codes that sometimes appear on the bottom but doesn't appear there is just a general indication of the type of plastic. It's not like an exact anything. And this one doesn't say anything. BPA is found, at least when it comes to plastics, in polycarbonate plastic, which is um, glass-like. Right. So it's like the clear or colored, Water. yeah, shatterproof um, plastic. And that, both of these will actually leach out into the oh, yeah. materials. Um, and, you know, running them through the dishwasher is going to speed up the amount. So if you do have plastics, people have plastic food processor bowls and plastic blender bowls, uh, carafes. And those you want to hand wash right. and not put them in the dishwasher. You don't have to ditch them completely. You know, for people that have health issues, as you do, I think it's smart to just move away from... Completely. Okay. Plastics completely. Both BPA and phthalates are synthetic estrogens. BPA actually was developed in the late 1800s, but used in the 1930s as an estrogen replacement. Wow. So for um, anything that is going to be um, issues with estrogen dominance, which is a problem that a lot of 
people, women in general, experience. Um, a lot of cancers, particularly breast cancers, are exacerbated um, by excess estrogen in the body, which is one of the things that is a contributing factor to breast cancer in the first place. Right. Um, any, they're hormone disrupting, so anything that has to do with the hormone system, your endocrine system, right. your thyroid, right. which is part of that system, yes. has the potential to be impacted by these. So what these chemicals do is they um, can basically, uh, they block or mimic natural estrogen in the body. So natural estrogen is floating around in the body, BPA or phthalates or other estrogen um, uh, disrupting chemicals can come in and sort of masquerade as natural estrogen. Um, and that's not going to give you a rash, it's not going to make your hair fall out, it's not going to have an immediate reaction is right. what people are looking for when they're like, it's toxic, right. but I'm okay. And the reality is that there's some subtle effects that are happening uh, under the surface. And that's what I was saying earlier that it can take, it can take decades for the impacts of this to appear, which makes research into this topic really challenging. And so prenatal exposures to these things, not only you know what you were exposed to, but what your mother was exposed to also have the ability, or research is starting to show that these, uh, they're referred to as epigenetic changes, right. have the ability to impact multiple generations down the line. Right. But, they'll, but they won't actually, the first generation, like your grandmother might have been exposed to something and she never would have had an impact, right. nor would your mother but the first impact would appear in your generation. Wow. And so this is some of the reason why environmental chemicals are being sort of pushed into this conversation about general health and wellness because we're starting to see that the disease rates are rising way faster than we can account for and that this very likely might be part of the that problem. Yes, I agree. So that's a big problem. Anything that's related to endocrine disruption, um, cancer, phthalates are linked to birth defects, um, early onset puberty, um, wow. a whole bunch of unsavory things that we want to be avoiding, generally speaking. Yes. Um, and um, even things like behavioral problems, um, learning disabilities things that would sort of fall under that umbrella of... This is a very big system. It's this, a, your endocrine is system is a system. huge system. Oh my God, it's everywhere. It controls everything. Everything. And so anything that interferes with that system is something that you want to have out because you're trying to regulate it yourself yes. and your body's trying to heal and you're trying to heal yourself. So get the things out that are attacking that system or interfering with that system. It's, I sort of, I, I liken it to turning the volume down. Like, let's mm -hmm. just get all the other stuff out yes. um, as much as possible. So plastics obviously are one thing, but then there's a lot of other things going on in the kitchen that aren't related to plastics. Um, and the first one that I like to uh, think about is water. New York City um, fluoridates their water supply. Right, that's horrible. And yeah, in particular, it's not good for your thyroid. Um, your brain. It's not good for your brain. It's not good for your thyroid. No. Um, in Europe in the 1960s, doctors used to actually prescribe fluoride as a thyroid suppressant wow. for people who had overactive thyroids at very low doses. Um, and the water supply in New York, like I said, is fluoridated, and your regular Brita filter doesn't filter out fluoride. Wow. Your regular Brita. They get water from the river. They do get water from the river. They That's do. That's ideal, right? Well, if the river's not polluted, right. and if the uh, municipal water treatment system is adequate, and New York is actually really good. We have really good water. Except for the fluoride. Except for the fluoride, and then we have all these other issues, and so public water systems will um, add disinfectants to the water supply because we don't want things like cholera coming back, right? right? So this yeah, is not a terrible thing. I'm not saying we shouldn't disinfect our water, but the result is that we're getting residual amounts of chlorine Right. in our drinking water and chlorine can react with other things that are naturally present in the water. Right, we wouldn't drink pool water. No, you wouldn't drink pool water, but the chlorine's actually not the biggest issue. The chlorine reacts with other things that are in the water and creates mm. chemicals that are carcinogenic. Wow, And That's horrible. Yeah, and it's a really, really tiny amount, but at the same time, these really, really tiny amounts are being bombarded, we're being bombarded with little tiny amounts all day. Like I said earlier, there's some of them we can't 
deal right. with, but the ones that we can, we should. Yes. Um, and we should do it proactively because, you know, government legislation is not going to happen anytime soon. Government can't <laughs> even stay open for business. So just saying. <laughs> For the type of cancer that you have, it's really important, I think, that, that you get fluoride out. So, yeah, filtering the waters, you know, for cooking, but also for things like, you know, if you can, for showering, because... Right, I really want to do that, too, because then it gets in your mouth, it gets in your eyes, it gets on your skin, it well, gets Well, you in your breathe hair. it in is well, the bigger so issue, uh, you know, breathing it in and absorption. <laughs> You're running rings around us, girl. Um... And you don't have to get a whole house water filtration system to deal with that. Those can be really expensive. Right. I see they have like little things. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And those are what you're going to want to look for there, something called a KDF filter. And they're like $50. They last a really long time. Yes. Um, and that's probably going to be the easiest. You just screw it on before the actual nice. shower head. Nice. Um, and you can get them on Amazon. It's yeah. not like you don't have to go hunt and peck for them. Those oh, are pretty awesome. easy. So I just moved actually from New York to Portland, Oregon. Nice. But um, uh, they don't fluoridate, fluorid, uh, fluoridate the water in Portland, so it's not, you know, I don't need as extensive of a system. Um, and then I'll always have a KDF filter on my shower. Just It's kind of a no-brainer. It's going to take any um, heavy metals out and chlorine. Um, that's going to be present in the water. 50% of the chlorine that we get absorbed comes from the shower um, through, the, through our skin um, and through inhalation because a lot of these chemicals will vaporize in the steam. They're volatile chemicals, so they kind of turn into a little gas, and then you're breathing it in, and you can smell oh it when you turn on the water and it stinks. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and you you're, you're smelling, you know, residual chemicals, and those chemicals are going to fluctuate throughout the year. So and then it's going through the pipes that are rusty and dirty. Well, if they're the bigger issue with the pipes is if there's lead, and. Lead. There's, you know, depending on how old your house is or when your house was built, there may or may not be lead. Right. Um, and you can get really inexpensive lead testing kits for the faucet that are like five, eight dollars, just to see whether or not there's any lead. Right. What are you using for, oh. like pots and pans and well, stuff? I don't like using the nonstick. There's some I used to use. But that one's perfect. This is perfect because it's all one. scratched up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Nonsticks, you know, were super popular back in the day, um, and not even that back in the day. Um, you know, because there's less oils, like the whole low-fat cooking craze, no. is you don't need any oil because nothing oh, sticks, right. and it makes really? clean up a breeze. It um, too. Well, when the pro it's overheated. and when it's overheated, it's releasing toxic gases that are actually toxic to the thyroid. <laughs> so. There are studies that show that the, the fluorinated chemicals that are used to make the nonstick coating um, can off-gas or be released at normal cooking temperatures. And people will often like preheat a pot or a pan, maybe not this one, right. you know, if they're going to try to sear something. Yeah, sometimes I turn on the fire first and then I put that right. and there's nothing in the pot. Right. And that's only going to be a problem if the temperature is, you know, if it's sitting there for a few minutes, it's getting really hot. But we also have to consider that this pot, for example, is pretty scratched. So the yeah. surface is compromised. Right. Um, and that, you know, that's going to exacerbate any, um, any of those tears or scratches in the coating are going to exacerbate the amount that can be released. And also you can end up with little flecks of Teflon in your food. Yeah. The other thing is that, um, the use of Teflon pans in homes that have birds is actually um, been noted to have caused many, many, many bird deaths. We had a bird die. I don't know why, but she died. Well, what happens is uh, the uh, respiratory system of birds are like incredibly sensitive. Right. This is why they're the whole canary in the coal mine. And um, they call it Teflon toxicosis. A lot of bird owners don't have any nonstick in the house because they can be immediately overcome by fumes mm -hmm. and it just, they'll be, you know. Yeah. Alive one second and then. Alive one yeah. second and then not alive the next. And homeowners are like, oh, bird owners are like, oh my God. So if you, you know, take a look at like Bird Fancy Magazine, which I don't imagine that you do. <laughs> but if you did, you would often find articles and, you know, really upsetting stories by people who lost their pets um, wow. because of nonstick 
cookware in the home that was left overheating. Do we want to talk, touch at all on the organic, organic? food? Yeah, Just you because you are, Nicole, uh, you are doing organic, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. As much as possible. Then, you know, like that right there is like, if I had to pick out the thing that you're doing awesome, it's that because the amount of pesticides um, the residues might be small, but they are linked to so many different things. They're carcinogenic, they're neurotoxic, they're developmental or reproductive GMOs. toxins. Yeah, genetically modified. I mean, that's separate from the pesticide that's issue, separate. but it's still part of that. Yeah. yeah, it's still part of that whole conversation, and it's just easier to avoid them. Yes, the cost is a little bit more, but... A few cents, a few dollars. Yeah, but it's, this is, you know, I, I liken it to, you know, it's a little bit like health insurance to a certain extent. Right, and because you don't, I don't see the doctor. Like, normally I don't go to the doctor because I'm, if I'm sick, I'll fix it myself with some right. kind of natural uh, right. alternative. I think of it as just being proactive and your food tastes yes. better. Yes. It's grown, you know, generally speaking, a little bit more consciously. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's not only, it's not only good for you, it's good for your daughter. You know, I mean, oh, yes. she's she's in the same environment that you're in and so all of these synthetic estrogens you know she's going to be approaching puberty and we don't want anything to interfere with that process and good luck to you when that happens <laughs> but like <laughs> I, i'm not even i can't even think about it i can't fathom it <laughs> well when it happens but we don't want anything these are like really right. delicate windows of development and things that interfere with the developing systems in those windows have the ability to have a much more profound impact than if the same exposure happened outside that window of development. Yes. And so when you're young and experiencing those windows of development, it's far more important for her to be avoiding as many of these things as possible yes. for her future. And we do. It's really hard to say, to single it out to like one single thing like organics only. And the reason is every single person's individual body is different, their body chemistry is different, their um, ability to detoxify is gonna be different, their lifetime exposure is gonna be different, their environment is gonna be different. And so there's so many variables that it's impossible to tell which is the one thing, and there's likely not one thing that causes somebody's health to decline. It's usually a cascade of events yes. that causes someone's health to go south. And it can sometimes not happen for 20 or 30 years. We, you know, we go to Duane Reed and we see like, you know, 68 different types of shampoo. So we feel like we have choice, freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. The reality is every single one of those products is loaded with chemicals. So if we want to choose products that don't have them, we suddenly, our, our choice went from like 68 to zero. And so we as consumers have to be proactive and you have to seek out companies that take a stand and whose mission it is to not use these products or these ingredients in their products. Um, and what's awesome is that more and more, um, as more and more people become aware of this issue of, of these chemical toxins that we're exposed to every day, more and more companies are starting to sprout up um, to address this that didn't used to before. You got a little thumb right here, honey. Go get it. Go get a napkin. <laughs> and that's the lipstick I don't want her to play with because that's not the organic one. I think you have to take the cloth, wet it, and then go What's around cloth? it. This, this and towel. you could put a little soap on it, too. What's cloth? Well, I don't know. I don't know about the soap. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll do the soap. <laughs> <laughs> you just do the water. <laughs> I'm wearing makeup today, but everything that I'm wearing is from companies that are using infinitely better ingredients. Um, and, you know, you've got some of the same uh, phthalates that were in the soft plastic cup. You've got right. parabens, right. Um, which Sulfates? are going to, uh, those are going to be more like in the, that's for like uh, for foaming, foaming and stuff. And right. there's other uh, properties that it imparts, but you're probably not going to find too many of those in these types of products, but you will find them in soaps, shampoos, tooth, toothpaste and stuff. Uh, for some reason, we like our toothpaste to foam. Yeah. Um, You're right, it doesn't always. I've it doesn't always, it and it's home. oftentimes because it doesn't have sulfites <laughs> in it. So, but, but the point is that it is possible to get all of the same products, sometimes not with the same performance. So with things like mascara, 
Um, you've got mercury as a preservative that's often in mascara. Um, there's all kinds of um, plastics and silicones. You know, if we think of waterproof mascara, well, how does that work? Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. You opened my eyes to many things that I had a slight idea about, but now I'm more aware, and so I can make better decisions when purchasing products and using. I will be very conscious, especially with the eyes and the mouth and the skin and the hair and the water. <laughs> <laughs> and the list is long. The list is long. All right. Perfect. Cool. Great. That's High it. Five. Yes. High five. High five. Bam! Yeah. Nice job. You're pretty good.